Hi, this is Maria from Stop, Listen, Think, and I am in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Today is November the 21st, 2011. So I'm down here with Jeremy, who's one of my hosts tonight on the channel for the movement. And uh, Jeremy's going to tell us how long he'd been down here and how it all began for him. Um, the Occupy movement actually started a few days before the 15th, in which um, we had some meetings with some people. Um, very low attendance, but they basically set up our first march, which was got a head count of around 400 strong, um, which I, I, I chalk it up to Facebook hype was the reason. Um, but regardless, um, we've been o physically occupying since the 15th of October. Um, first few days were a little messy. Um, our first General Assembly was not well facilitated. Um, but democracy is messy, and we're we're an organic movement. So we we let things come as is, and we work accordingly. So all in all, the um, movement itself here in Fort Wayne hasn't been too messy because you're not getting much resistance from the actual city. Are you worried that they're going to come by and have you uproot your tents? And the actual movement has has that uh, been something that's been weighing heavy on your mind during this time? Um. Not in the beginning, but seeing what happened at Zuccotti, um, seeing those places um, get certain regulations enforced, I believe that not only us as the Occupy Movement are basing our actions and whatnot on the bigger city Occupy Movement, especially Wall Street, especially that's where it started, the police force also act accordingly with what larger cities do. Um, but as Fort Wayne personally, I. I don't think you don't see much resistance from the no, local police uh, officers. Like I had told you before, um, we want Fort Wayne to kind of be a model city, in which that we show bigger cities that you can have constant contact with your police force um, and your city representatives, and make sure things can can go swimmingly. Yeah. Well, um, my main um, question here is about the actual movement. Is I don't know where. <laughs> We might be closer here. Um, what I don't understand is why the movement itself is not working towards going at the capital areas where, you know, a lot of our senators and our government government people are at. Wouldn't it make more sense for the movement itself to be at the capitals of these places because they're the ones that actually deal with the Congress and the lawmakers? Of course. Um, the big thing is Occupy Indy has essentially been shut down. Um, they've had a lot of resistance with the uh, police force and basically there's been this big divide between the people on the ground and then the people who are running the website and they've had this great divide in which the website has kind of taken over the physical occupation um, that's that's kind of digressing but why are we not there right is because there's this common misconception that if you hear um, the criticism from passerbys and people driving buying cars get a job Right. Is, is the number one they thing. They think you're a bunch of hippies and of people not wanting to work and, and not the, wanting the to is, change that. The thing is, the majority of us are employed. Shockingly, shockingly, the majority of us are actually Correct. employed. And it'd be very hard for us to maintain a physical presence in Indy with that being, you know, hour and a half, two hour drive. For the having, locals. And having those people who do have wife and kids and jobs and, and what have you to be down there constantly maintain a presence. So um, are you? So you're not actually worried about martial law happening here, but yeah. like in New York, I mean that is like a big, bigger size movement. So, you know, what is your concerns with the New York movement? Are you afraid that martial law will step in and and you know basically destroy the entire movement itself? Quite possibly. Um, I don't know about using your term destroy. Um, I think that um, we talked about this earlier is that when you have things that like happen in Oakland with police brutality and whatnot, that that gets people awake. That gets people seeing that, oh my God, this is a movement. And that actually creates a stronger sense of the movement rather than it being detrimental. Um, so far as the eviction from Zuccotti Park, um, I mean, they're there. Again, they've had a court order that allows their presence. They don't get tents and tarps and whatnot, but they are a vertical movement, which I 
applaud them for um, 100%. Um, we, we have it easy here. We're a horizontal movement. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fort Wayne's, if, if for those that don't know, Fort Wayne's a mid-sized type uh, city, population about 500,000. And uh, yeah, I think it's about half a million here. Um, it may not look like it because we're actually almost the same size as um, like Dayton or Indy. You know? Right. It's just that our this city here is more like a donut shape. So you have the outside Very businesses out. and then you have the inside core. So, you know, the business itself may not look like there's a lot of people in Fort Wayne, but this is actually a really good um, test market because you have major cities that surround it. You have Detroit, Chicago, and Indianapolis mm -hmm. that this is actually a really good test market for products and, and development. So, um, that it's blurry. Jeremy's going to give me a tour now of the area of occupied Fort Wayne. Well, basically, you're kind of sitting in our haphazard media center, as we kind of like to call it. The side of the tent is basically a common ground for people to sit and converse and do uh, media work. Um, this table is designated for that. Um, this is basically some of our kitchen area uh, where we wash, wrench, and sanitize dishes. They're labeled accordingly. Um, <laughs> Over here, we have basically where we cook all the food. Uh, you point that way. And what have Tell you. me if I, because I'll probably take. Yep, that's, that's our kitchen area. So let's walk Still into have the light. Of food. Can I get you guys? Can I get a couple of you guys? I mean, I'm Some sorry that I have to do it this way, but I did not bring my camera and my stuff. I'm from Ohio. Yeah, yeah, I'm from Ohio, and I've been kind of following the movement. But I lived here in Fort Wayne for like 30 years. <laughs> so that's what she did last time. Last time she did the interview, she, was, she asked me what I wanted to catch. Yeah, we still have uh, more food and supplies in the Union bus. Oh, we got to talk about the Union bus. Well, we moved it, so it's not there anymore. It's oh. down the street. <laughs> and being no, It's in the parking lot. Is it here now? Okay, we moved it back. Okay. All right, uh, Jeremy, you want to talk about uh, about the union bus? Oh, and yeah. how did you get that? Um, I don't know when exactly Denny donated it, but it's from the uh, the steel workers. Um, basically, the only reason why he has it is for transporting things, and he uh, actually takes people who are disabled to go get them down to the polls. That's why it has a handicap sticker on it. Um, he takes disabled people to go to go vote. Um, he donated to us because he's not using it. So wow. We use it. And That's that really up. nice of them. So you had, you were on which, which radio? Global Revolution, which is uh, basically the hub for uh, the live stream, which is uh, if you want information about big events that are going on in Occupy, you go to Global Revolution, and they'll do links to certain cities and whatnot. And we were on there for about an hour and a half, I, I think. That's pretty good. You had people from all over the world showing up, huh? Yep. So we have a couple tents this out is our here. First aid tent, uh, slash hypothermia tent. Oh. Um, if anybody has hypothermia, we have a, a medic who's trained. Awesome. So yeah. That's good. So um, most of you just basically go home during the evening, or is there always someone here? There is the always somebody here. We have a security team. Uh, we manage, maintain a 24/7 presence. Um, security team. We have shifts. Uh, sign up sheet for shifts and whatnot. And uh, there, we at least have two people on security at all times. So there will be people here, no matter when. You can come down anytime, ask questions, get involved. Get involved is the most important thing so that uh, people are aware of the whole movement and itself. Right. So, but it's a, it's a nice sized town. Yeah, it's yeah. very spread out is the problem with Fort Wayne and our tr public transport system is, is kind of crap, in my opinion. We're a very spread out city, so it's it's hard to centralize all of our force. <laughs> oh, you do have like they have like fourteen tents, right? Um, I don't even know the number actually. I don't know. As soon as we got down here, we were uh, before at Headwaters Park, and then the nine twelve committee rented the pavilion for five hundred dollars and called it a liberation movement. We got the occupiers out and did a bunch of slander and whatnot. And, Whatever. This is a be much better location, as you can see. This is basically the busiest intersection in downtown Fort Wayne, Maine, and Clinton. Um, cars coming through here constantly. We don't have anybody out protesting, which is our problem. Um, our direct action is not so direct. 
Um, we need we need more people out maintaining the but presence. The the awareness is there because people are probably asking why are these why tents? Are these people here? Why are exactly. these tents? These people out here, you know, what's going on? So, oh, and there's my guy. Matt Anthony Wayne. Let me get him because I'm actually doing some um, information on, like I said, Indian cultures. Uh, and I, um, I'm covering the Treaty of Greenville. Yes. So I've been, yes. but I'm going to come back for He's you. Many, many Miami Indians. Yes, he did. Uh, little turtle blue jacket. Which is which is uh, the symbolism for that, which is why I posted. This is my tent, actually, right oh, here. Oh, let's go back. <laughs> yeah, my tent is right here. Uh, first day that we were down here, I moved my tent, and I got this spot specifically. Because you're like Mad Anthony Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, well, um, just uh, thank you for the tour. Mm -hmm. It's been really great meeting you, Jeremy. You and too. I'm glad that we actually got to meet. And yes. good luck with everything that you're doing. Thank you, ma'am.